Judy. Yeah. Guess what? What? Mum's the word. William, it's not a secret. Everybody knows there's a new episode of Garden Time. Welcome to Garden Time. We're at French Prairie Gardens, and it's not just about their mums, but about all the fun that you can come and have out here on the farm. So put everybody in the car and come out and have a great day. And because it is fall, we'll be talking to Jan today about what you can be doing in your garden. But first, we go out to Hoyt Arboretum to see their beautiful fall trees. Well, I am standing in the beautiful Hoyt Arboretum. I'm here with Martin. And Martin, we, when we, you actually drove us out here to the Arboretum in, a, in one of your vehicles. And even driving through, we saw so many amazing plants. And then this one totally stole our, our vision. It's stunning. First of all, tell me which one this is. Uh, so this is the American smoke tree. So it's uh, Catinus obovatus. And I, I know a lot of people look so forward to fall color because, you know, we're, we're we know that we're heading into winter and then you get this blast of color, but a lot of us really, we don't get how it happens completely. So you're going to talk to us a bit about that. Sure. Yeah. So, um, yeah, full color kind of, it, it generally starts with day length. So as the day length gets shorter, the tr deciduous trees, um, are basically, they've, they've evolved to lose their leaves to help them protect against the cold winters. And so they, they drop all those leaves and basically shut down for the winter. And what they start to do is they develop an obsession layer um, at the base of the leaf where the, what we would see later is the leaf scar. And as that obsession layer forms, um, the sugars inside the leaf and the chlorophyll inside the leaf basically stops getting removed from the leaf and new chlorophyll is no longer being being uh, rebuilt in the Into leaf it. by the so plant. So it's kind of like a little dam then. It is, and it's it just shutting off all the flow of energy into and out of the leaf. And so what you see is chlorophyll starts to go away, and some of those other, other things that exist in the leaf, anthocyanins and carotenes, these other chemicals and things that are in the leaf that help with photosynthesis, they start to get shown basically and so we see the levels of those start to increase because all of it was always in the leaf it's it, just that this system is what makes us see them now. yeah exactly and so what we can see is when we get these really nice beautiful sunny days um, the the leaves are in full sun um, the chlorophyll is breaking down faster in there and we actually like see a leaf that is in the sun versus what wow. a part of the leaf that has not had any direct sunshine Look and how that. it's still green that chlorophyll is still in there and because it hasn't gone through its reactive process the chlorophyll hasn't broken down and so it's still sitting there but in the full sun area so the top of the tree and always see the full color first because the, the sunlight is breaking down chlorophyll whenever that reaction happens chlorophyll falls apart and has to be rebuilt by the plant and it can't because of that little because, dam. because and, we've okay, got that obsession that layer yeah and then we sense. see like increases in um, the ph changes in the leaf and so anthocyanin which is the red color which we all like to see red colors in the fall um, a lot of trees have just naturally higher levels of those compounds and so we see more brighter reds and maples, um, the, the smoke tree, um, sumac, which we'll, we'll see close to here, um, sourwood as well has a, actually a, an acidic. Um, well, uh, and in fact, we are going to go to another place real quick and look at some actual maples to see some of that red, hopefully. We will. We're yeah. going to go check out a few more trees. There's so many to see. Great. Let's get going. All right. Okay, Martin. So we took some paths over here and what path are we on now? Uh, so we're right on the maple trail now. And I do see maples all around me, but man, that one behind us, brilliant. What is that one? Yeah, so we can see the sugar maples are just starting to turn. So we can see the very top of this amazing sugar maple. And of course, that's the tree everyone always associates with great fall color right. from the northeastern United States. But there's a lot of, of even the Japanese maples in this area as well. And they have a tremendous selection of color. Oh yeah, we have um, almost, I think, 70 different types of maples. And honestly, throughout the Arboretum, full color comes on at a different rate with all the different tree species. And so we have full color for another three, four weeks. There's tons of time to come up and see. And things. because of that, you also have a great uh, thing happening with photographers, right? Yeah, yeah. we want to get people out uh, taking photos of the trees. And we have a, a competition called uh, Fall into Hoyt. And um, you can submit it through our website. And we're looking for great photos of full color at the Arboretum. And then 
you know, if people do want to come out because they want to see this, but they're a little concerned about, you know, the names and all of that, you actually have some things happening this weekend that can We help do. Out. So we have a tour at noon um, and on Saturday, and that's our general public tour. And then on Sunday at one o'clock, I'll be leading a tour for our, our members, for the Hoida Burnham members. Absolutely perfect. Well, you know, every year and all through the year, you can find something that just kind of blows your mind out here at Hoyt Arboretum. So for more information, we always invite you to go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to their website. Thank you so much, my Very friend. Very good, thank you. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. Your car does more than get you where you need to go. It helps you live the life you love. At Capital Subaru, we're 100% dedicated to finding what works for you. And with a wide selection, personalized service, and plenty of perks, you won't need to go anywhere else to find it. Let us help you make the most of your day. Come shop your way on the parkway. Take on any fall adventure in the smart and versatile new 2017 Subaru Outback 3.6R Limited. Lease it now, just $260 per month, only at Capital. Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. Every year, trees fall or break, causing property damage, power outages, and injury. Now is the time for Bartlett Tree Experts and Collier Arbor Care to get your trees ready for the extreme conditions ahead. Our free consultation will help to spot the signs of potentially hazardous trees. We can help address problems before they occur. Whether it's trees or shrubs, we can help you get a healthy and beautiful garden. Collier Arbor Care and Bartlett Tree Experts, providing environmentally safe tree care since 1907. Garden Time is going to Europe, and you can join us. Next August, join Garden Time as we tour gardens in London, Paris, and Belgium. See world-famous gardens like Hampton Court, Kew, Sissinghurst, and Great Dixter, and Monet's Water Lily Garden in France. We'll also see sites in London and Paris, like the Tower Bridge and the Eiffel Tower. We'll also stop in the Champagne area of France, tour a Belgian brewery, castle gardens, and a winery. We'll also have a river cruise. Our final stop is a visit to the floral carpet in Brussels. We'll be staying in four-star hotels with 24 of your meals and your airfare included. Mark your calendar for next August for this gardener's bucket list tour and then sign up. And if you book now, you'll save $300 per person. Visit the Garden Time website and click on the tours link for all the details. And we'll see you in Europe. So I'm standing here with one of my favorite gardeners, Jan McNeilan. And Jan, it is that time of month where we come chat with you about things to be doing at this time of year. However, this time we did want to make a reference to last month's story right. on root rot. So I'll let right. you take it. It's kind of a convoluted thought, root rot and stress being related. Right. Uh, and so I actually wrote it and I'm going to just plain read it so that it's clear. When some plants are subject to so soggy soils in the winter, their roots rot. And when summer heat stress stresses plants, they don't have the hair roots to take in the water and nutrients that they need, and they don't grow new roots. And thus, a plant that can, can die of root rot in the summer, and it can die of drought stress in the winter. Yeah, and that, that makes perfect sense. And by, you're talking about those little feeder roots that are on top there, and I see, I see that yeah, Abu the cat's back. <laughs> come back to visit with us. Um, but that's, that's really what you're talking about. There's those roots that really take in yeah. all the necessary yeah. stuff in the right. immediate sense right. are gone. Right. Okay. And that's, that's, you're going to see that in some plants that are in heavier, soggier soils. Right, right. Just like you're going to see stress right now on trees. And we from even, the drought we can stress. see one right over well, there. There's, yeah, there's a, uh, a cedar, a western red cedar that's flaggy. Yeah. And what that it, what that means is the interior of the plant is browning, but the tips are green. Yeah. So it's just losing as much as it can so it can still support the tree. Right. So it's fine. So then what else do we have going on well, here cuz I see something really yeah. really lovely here. Yeah, right. <laughs> this is a fruit fly heaven. <laughs> um it's stuck in the bag here, but I finally got tired. I've done all sorts of different tricks to catch fruit flies in the kitchen uh -huh. when I'm canning and doing other things with lots of fruits and vegetables. Um, 
And so I had some fly paper in the garage and I put one up and sure enough, it works better than anything I've ever used. And in full disclosure, you did put this right over your kitchen sink. It yeah, was it was just kitchen. to the left, yeah. yeah. I, I don't like it for the great big flies, that's what it's for, but then you get to watch those flies like sort of yeah, move their feet. <laughs> it's true. And fruit flies are smaller, and so that just, yeah. and and this, How long was this one up? About four weeks. I just left it up the whole time that I had things in the kitchen. Because we are bringing in a lot of a fruit and different yeah. vegetables this time of year in our kitchen. And so it's that cheap, would it's yeah. non-toxic, it's just throw it away. Right there. And then we should also cover some spider stuff that's going on this time right, of year as well. Right. <laughs> well, we go inside when it gets colder yeah. and so do insects and crawling critters and spiders and everything else. So um, it's not uncommon to have spiders in the house. Doesn't mean that they're all venomous spiders, right. they're just spiders. The spiders that you see out in the garden that you're going like this with, a lot of they're, kung fu or, action, they're isn't orb it? <laughs> weavers. They're the ones that have the rounded yeah. uh, web and those are not venomous spiders and they aren't even going to bother coming in the house right. unless it's really easy to do. So our thought is instead of using any chemicals in the house at all, just uh, have a shop vac or a small vacuum or there's all sorts of ways to get them outside. Yep, I've often used paper cups. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I'm works. guilty of that. And it what works. else do you have for us then? Well, um, leaving leftovers to rot, like on mummified fruit, you clean it up. And if you've got rotting uh, vegetation, clean it up so that it's not there all winter long, uh, so that it's not an issue. Yeah. If you have spring bulbs, it's time to get them in the ground. If you don't, if it's December and you still haven't done it, it's better to plant them unless the plant is, uh, or unless the soil is frozen. Right, right. Um, but so get those in the ground. A lot of people stop weeding in, in the fall because one thing, we're just tired of working it, yeah, outside. It's exhausting. But you, the more weeding you do now, the less you're going to have in the spring to deal with. Well, there you have it. Not only can we find things to do at this time of year, but we can also plan on things to do next year to make it easier for us. Thank yeah. you so much, Jan. Right. We'll see you next month. Okay. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Hi, I'm Sarah from Portland Nursery, and I'd like to invite you to our annual apple tasting. No one does apples like Portland Nursery, so come join us, always the second and third weekends of October. Sample a variety of apples from sweet to tart. Enjoy fresh pressed apple cider, piping hot apple strudel, and bins of freshly picked apples and pears. We'll have live entertainment, crafts for the kids, and cooking demonstrations. Don't miss our annual apple tasting at our 50th and Stark location. Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Fiber on. Deck it right the first time. Do you have a leaning or broken fence? Fix a broken fence with ease. Made in Oregon, the sturdy fence post bracket can mend your drooping fence. Strong winds, falling debris, dry rot, and wayward drivers can all cause havoc on your once sturdy fence. Our sturdy bracket attaches to your existing fence and is easily installed in 30 minutes. Limit waste, materials, and save money by fixing your existing fence. Purchase online at sturdfence.com or visit participating PAR Lumber and Pro Build stores. We all love to have birds in our backyards and it's the change of the season, so what are we gonna do about bringing birds into our yards? I'm with Mitch at Backyard Bird Shops in West Lynn and so you have all the information, plus you gave me all these questions that keep me right on track. Thanks so much for the invitation out today. Well, you're very welcome. Thanks for coming out. We're happy to have you. Thanks, so, so what do we do now? It is fall, so how has it changed for us for feeding the birds? Well, fall and winter are, are a colder, wetter time of year, obviously here in, uh, in Oregon, in the Willamette Valley, and so uh, birds need to, uh, they're going to want more uh, types of uh, food because there's less natural food available out there for them. There are fewer insects, there are fewer flower blossoms and so forth. So we try to help them and supplement them with uh, feeding them in our backyards. And what kind of birds are going to be coming? 
Well, there are some migratory birds that we wouldn't otherwise see. A number of sparrows, golden crown sparrows, white crown sparrows, the Oregon junco, which comes down from the mountains um, in the on autumn and winter, and they're here for that period of time to get food where they can actually access it. And then what should we be using? Is it a different kind of seed this time of year? Well, um, it's the same kind of seed that we use all year long, but black oil sunflower seed really is the hands down favorite that we um, like to tell customers about. <laughs> and so this is a wonderful seed. It has a high oil content, has a very soft shell that um, perching, small perching songbirds can um, crack very, very easily and they love it. So we have some of the cleanest seed in the area. It goes through a process, a three-step process of being clean. So it's very, very high quality. We go through a lot of it and we also deal with our um, supplier directly. So oh, we have a very great. good relationship with them. And that's what we um, say is the first and foremost one to choose. And you have the black seed um, with the shells and without. That's correct, we do. We have um, something called the sunflower chips and these are right back here and it's out of the shell and it's just a cleaner way to feed and there's no mess of the shell on the you know fall, falling uh, um, sure. below feeders some people don't like that and also that seed can germinate when it's in the shell and some people don't like that as well so we offer different options for folks um, uh, with the black sunflower seed. Ah, and then what kind of feeders do we use? Okay great good question so during the wet season and uh, rain and snow and so forth we want to make sure that we protect the seed, whether it's in the shell or out of the shell. So this is a wonderful feeder that has a dome over it. It's a typical tube type feeder right here. And it's built specifically for small perching songbirds, as you can see by the size of these perches. And we put black sunflower seed in there. This dome protects it from getting wetter than it would otherwise. And there's a nice tray right here with drainage holes in it that also protects or keeps the seed falling on the ground as much as possible. This is an excellent combination setup right here that we offer at all of our stores. Very nice. Mitch, I see that you have some other type of feeders here, and what are these for? Oh, okay. So um, this is what we call a tray feeder, and it has a screen and welded wire mesh on the bottom. So this is a great feeder for offering seed like millet that I talked mm -hmm. about before and cracked corn to those ground feeding birds. So this is wonderful because it lets that water go right through and it keeps the seed as fresh and as dry as possible. You can also put a dome over this if you wanted to keep it extra dry. So All highly right. recommend that. I'll hold that one. And that's made out of cedar right there. That's nice. And, and what's that one? Yeah, this is a great feeder um, that we've carried for many, many years and it's a squirrel proof feeder. Uh -huh. So this is <laughs> yeah, this is operated by weight. So once a squirrel gets on here, um, it closes these little ports or access to these ports. And but little birds are so light with their feathers and hollow bones that they can get on there and it doesn't <laughs> close that. So you can also put a little dome on here to keep it extra dry. And it's just as simple as that. And nice. this is a great little setup for um, keeping the squirrels out and feeding them elsewhere in your yard, perhaps, right, but catering to the to the perching songbirds. Ah, and I see another question on your list is about a roost, a roost feeder. No, I'm roost sorry, pocket. a roost pocket. Yeah, exactly. And so what is that? So this is something that we've just started carrying the last couple of years, and it's really, really wonderful. And we've um, our customers like it for their birds as well. So really, it's a a place for birds to take refuge during the inclement weather. Again, autumn, fall, and winter when it gets really blister, uh, uh, blustery. I should say <laughs> and cold and rainy they can go into this at night um, if you put it in a somewhat out of the way area and just take refuge from that weather so you can literally save lives by putting <laughs> little course. birds lives by putting this out and so um, it's a great uh, a great option for them and they come in different uh, oh, and they're so cute. Uh, natural uh, <laughs> natural materials so this has a little coconut shell on it right there so these are really really nice and a great addition to your bird friendly yard definitely yeah. And then what about suet? Because I know that that's a different kind of bird maybe to feed the suet to. Yeah, there's some crossover with suet. And so we have a, a lot of types of suet and there are some seed eating birds like chickadees and nuthatches and woodpeckers that will eat suet. But there's a lot of birds that are simply insect eaters. There are um, bush tits um, and some woodpeckers don't prefer seed. So they will come to this. So suet is a, a very um, cold, a great for cold weather feeding. It has a high fat content to it. And this one right here, our Backyard Bird Shop brand, has insects in it, dehydrated insects, <laughs> and a fat content between 80 and 98%. This oh. is high quality, and our customers say their birds go crazy over and good it. Good nutrition. It, yeah. And then what about hummingbirds? Because we have one that stays here all winter, don't we? We do have one that stays here all winter. It's called the Anna's Hummingbird, just a very, very cute little hummingbird. Um, and they readily come to feeders during the 
um, during the winter because, again, no um, insects or very few insects available, no flower blossoms. So if you want to have loyal birds coming to your feeder, <laughs> this is really a time to invite them. And it's very, very easy with a simple um, sugar water mixture to have them come to your feeders. So we highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. It is, it is. Yeah. It is so much fun to have birds in our yards, even in the fall and winter. So if you have any other questions, please go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to the Backyard Bird Shop website or come into one of their stores. They're all around the Vancouver and the Portland area. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Thank you, Judy. Nice it's to pleasure. see you. <laughs>
choosing every little detail and um but the whole basis of it was starting with the white shiplap was just a beautiful clean slate and then it's just fun to add everything else on top uh, and it's really coming out nice it's really something that's so different for us that have regular size houses and sherry what mm -hmm. is the name of the contractor too let's mention them daystar tiny homes yeah mm -hmm. and so they've really been doing such a great job mm -hmm. and then to see all of this there's a special event today there is we're really excited about the event today because when ladies or gentlemen come and see the tiny house when they uh, view it then they'll be able to see how garden gallery has embellished it with all of their goodies oh. so it's going to be a fun day yeah and so we can walk through and talk to everybody you'll be here Absolutely. Jana's here Jana will be here and to answer questions our builder Jim will be here and we have refreshments going on just a really fun fun day to, for everybody to see my new home oh that is so yes. nice <laughs> well it's not just about the inside all this beautifulness. We're going to toss it out to William and he's going to talk to Don Sprague from Garden Gallery Ironworks and see what all the work is out there. All right, well, I'm out here with Don Sprague. Now, Don, uh, you know, we've done a lot of talk about the interior of the place and the work that's being done in there, but you are also doing a lot of stuff that you're going to use out here. So tell me about some of it. Uh, Sherry asked us to do a lot of the iron work for inside the house, and the first thing she came up with was a bed. Uh huh. And we've never built a bed frame before, but uh, we did. But you and have now. <laughs> we have, and it turned out, I'm pretty proud of it. It's I think lovely. it turned out really nice, and we got the little rosettes and stuff on here. And uh, It was the style she wanted, and we and, got it. And then I see some of the stuff that I see here is stuff that I've seen for sale at different places, and for sale you have here, like this table and chairs. Yeah, we built a lot of patio sets. Nice. Yes, some of them do. are all metal, and then some has got the granite tops on them. Uh, so, yeah, pet tables and chairs. And yeah. then, of course... Your, your containers are always lovely. Here's a window uh, box. Carol designed the, uh, the window planters here for Sherry to go there, and then she planted these up, and so they're ready to go to match the house. We got this window, window basket here, and then we've got a little patio planter here. And then I'm gonna guess that this adorable fencing goes here also, and you, you created that. That was fabricated. Yeah, that was fabricated to fit the loft in the house, and so uh, there's quite a bit of railing in this house. There's an upper deck to it, uh, and then there's also some railing on the front lower deck here right. and then of course the loft railing and one of the things that I think a lot of us don't realize because we see so much of your beautiful stuff in different garden centers and when we come out here to visit but you do a lot of fabrication you guys are are able to just build almost anything out of metals right we do a ton of custom work in fact I'd say a, a large percentage of our work now is custom work nice. for people yeah, really nice because there's there, custom work has to match what the, what exactly. the homeowner yeah. needs. Yeah, you have a vision that you're dealing with. And speaking of visions, I'm sure that a lot of people would love to come out and look at this. And today, you're actually opening up the tiny house for them to see it, right? We're going to have her all set, <laughs> and the weather's uh, not going to stop us. And you're getting it. Everybody that comes out gets a, a tiny pumpkin as well. Oh, we're giving away <laughs> those farmhouse white pumpkins, you know. It's, it's going to kind of be a little gift that we give everybody for showing up. Well, you know, it's been several times that we've come out here and gone through this process of creating this beautiful tiny home with Sherry. And so what we think would be fun is if you come out and actually walk through it, see all of the wonderful effects that have happened here, what Don has done to help make it beautiful. So for more information on today's event, go to Gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to their website. Don, my friend, thank you so much. Thank Lovely you. job. Thank you for watching today and thanks to French Prairie Gardens for letting us hang out. You know, it's a beautiful time to come out here and take home a mum for your front porch. And there are so many wonderful events happening at this time of year. So to find out about them, you can always go to Gardentime.tv and click on that events page. And for any other questions about today's show or any other show, you can go to that same web page. We sure enjoyed spending time with you today and we will do it again next week right here on Garden Time. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.